reboot the real work. I am your teacher and you are learning in my school. My aim is to bring you to completion. Unhindered, free from compulsive behavior, unrestrained, without shame, free, flourishing, and happy, looking to God in things great and small your aim is to learn and diligently practice all these things. Why then don't you complete the work, if you have the right aim and I have both the right aim and right preparation? What is missing? The work is quite feasible, and is the only thing in our power. Let go of the past. We must only begin. Believe me and you will see. Epictetus, Discourses, 2.19.29, 34. Oh you remember, in school or early in your life, being afraid to try something because you feared you might fail at it? Most teenagers choose to fool around rather than exert themselves. Half-hearted, lazy. Effort gives them a ready-made excuse, it doesn't matter. I wasn't even trying. As we get older, failure is not so inconsequential anymore. What's at stake is not some arbitrary grade or intramural sports trophy, but the quality of your life and your ability to deal with the world around you. Don't let that intimidate you, though. You have the best teachers in the world, the wisest philosophers who ever lived. And not only are you capable, the professor is asking for something very simple, just begin the work. The rest follows. T. January 18. See the world like a poet and an artist. Pass through this brief patch of time in harmony with nature, and come to your final resting place. Gracefully, just as a ripened olive might drop, praising the earth that nourished it and grateful to the tree that gave it growth. Marcus Aurelius, Meditations, 4.48.2 Here are some stunningly beautiful turns of phrase in Marcus's Meditations A Surprising Tree considering the intended audience, just himself. In one passage, he praises the charm and allure of nature's process, the stalks of ripe grain bending low, the frowning brow of the lion, the foam dripping from the boar's mouth. We should thank private rhetoric teacher Marcus Cornelius Fronto for the imagery in these vivid passages. Fronto, widely considered to be Rome's best orator besides Cicero, was chosen by Marcus's adopted father to teach Marcus to think and write and speak. More than just pretty phrases, they gave him and now us a powerful perspective on ordinary or seemingly unbeautiful events. It takes an artist's eye to see that the end of life is not unlike a ripe fruit falling from its tree. It takes a poet to notice the way baking bread splits in places and those cracks. While not intended in the baker's art, catch our eye and serve to stir our appetite and find a metaphor in them. There is clarity, and joy, in seeing what others can't see, in finding grace and harmony in places. Others overlook. Isn't that far better than seeing the world as some dark place? <laughs>